So I'm going to speak briefly now about uh, reducing ICU and hospital readmissions because that's a key component to all of this. If you're going to enhance recovery, you better not have your patients either A, coming back to the intensive care unit or B, being readmitted. So uh, there's um, one thing to be uh, doing things faster, but you better also be doing them better. Uh, my conflicts. So readmissions, I don't have to tell this group, uh, they nationwide are 18 percent of Medicare patients and 10 percent of all cabbage patients are readmitted within 30 days of discharge. It costs Medicare $26 billion, but it turns out up to 80 percent of them are preventable and the government knows that and that's why they're dinging hospitals for readmissions. They want us to fix it because if they're preventable and it's costing taxpayers, we should be able to do better and an average uh, readmission is $12,000. Uh, readmission penalties, here's where they are in 15, they're much higher now, uh, but they're big bucks and hospitals who have a lot of readmissions are tracked and uh, billed for them. Basic tenants, how do you prevent readmissions? You have to engage patients and families in their care. You have to tell them up front um, how long the hospitalization is going to be and when the patients are going to go home. And they tell you, well, my family member is out in Colorado. You tell them five days later I'd like them to be in town to take you home. You need to provide oversight of care coordination and quality monitoring working in partnership with case management and post-acute partners. So we round with an entire multidisciplinary team and the case manager every single day follows the progress of these patients in order to see their social needs and make sure they're going to the right place at the right time. And we work to develop and ensure streamlined operations, patient satisfaction and care navigation. So what I do with patients is I walk in the room and I ask the simple question, what are the barriers to get this patient home? Every day I ask the same question every day and people have to come up with a list, otherwise it's discharge day. And you count down, you tell them you're going to go home in three days, two days, one day. And I always lower it a day so that actually when they're not quite ready, they say, I say, all right, fine, you get one extra day. And they feel like, wow, what a gift. But really I'm sort of squeezing it. Uh, but these are all just little tricks of the trade. Um, and developing best practice standards, that's what we're trying to all do right here today. Uh, and working with uh, care, case, um, care pathways, actually a pathway that actually uh, implements a day-by-day -day plan. And then we meet monthly with these model of care meetings where we actually look at all of our patients and we look over the quarters of how long their lengths of stay were and whether they go home or whether they go to rehab. And we pretty much now sent 80% uh, of our patients home, 20% to rehab. And three years ago, it was opposite that. And we found that patients who go home do better. They have less readmissions than the patients that go to the SNFs. They're happier. Uh, and certainly, it's a lot cheaper if you're in a bundle. Uh, and the other part problem is that patients go to a million different SNFs. And here's all the little SNFs where our patients go. And if you try to say, well, we're going to send them all to one SNF and we're going to develop a perfect pathway, it doesn't work because we cover half a state. And so the answer was forget sending the patients to these 14 different SNFs, instead send them home. And if they have to go to a SNF, work with one or two select ones and show them exactly how to do best practice. And also track your readmissions so when they start going up or down, work on them. Figure out why the patient was readmitted and was it preventable. And here's a great way to prevent uh, bad outcomes and this is for readmissions, blood utilization, length of stay, everything. And it's to compare surgeons. And we put their little initials on top, not that you have no idea who they are, they just look at their initial. We try to blind it by initial. But you don't want to be red, you want to be green. And, and surgeons and physicians in general hate being outliers and they will change their practice. They won't change their practice for money necessarily, but they will change their practice if they think they're an outlier and that the guy sitting next to them, their partner, is doing a better job. So you publish, you become transparent, and you will move the needle. Uh, a couple other little things. Utilize a full-time clinical care coordinator. I think that's my biggest message of the day. If you're going to do an ERAS program, you need a full-time clinical care coordinator that will do all this stuff. And what does she do? First, she meets all the patients pre-op and she tells them what to expect and their families and she follows along and streamlines their transition of care, thereby reducing their length of stay. She's the liaison to the family. She immediately follows these patients once they get home. I send patients home with subtherapeutic uh, INRs all the time because I'm not interested in keeping them in the hospital, just waiting for their INR to get therapeutic. They're in AFib, I don't care. Start them on Coumadin and 
enroll them in our anticoagulation clinic to ensure safe transition of care to dosing at home. She calls every day, makes sure they actually got their dosing, and it gets them out of the hospital and the patients are happy because they're home. And if they ever have to go to a SNF, she has them on SNF, uh, speed dial so she knows exactly where they are and what kind of care they're getting. Uh, in addition, concrete steps to reduce readmissions. Uh, follow up by phone with patients who are at high risk for readmission. We know the high risk. These three guys can round on a patient and they can tell you that that patient is at high risk for readmission. We know it. Uh, it's gestalt. We can tell. They're the CHF patients, the patients with diastolic dysfunction, low EF. Uh, we can tell they're, they don't have much mobility. They're a little frail. And we call those patients up early and make sure that everything's fine. And when there's a hint of a problem, we bring them back to the office, not the emergency room. If a patient happens to show up in the emergency room, the EMR automatically calls us. So we, we can, can block a lot of admissions. Uh, we um, wait until we have full 24 hours of rate control before we get discharged a patient. So if a patient has rapid AFib and the next morning they look great, I wait a full 24 hours because I find those are the patients that often pop back into rapid AFib, end up back in my ER and that doesn't help the situation. Uh, the office nurse practitioner avoids the emergency room by setting separate times up during weekday hours to see these patients. You can't say your office is full and you can't see these patients. Go to the ER. That doesn't work. It costs money. Uh, it, it's terrible for the patients. They sit in the waiting room and they get crappy care. Forget it. They need to come back to your office. Make office hours available. Screen and audit the readmissions. We talked about that. And if perchance a patient needs to come back in for a little fluid overload or rate control, utilize the observation status to decrease your readmission bundle cost and length of stay when appropriate. Uh, continuing on, um, we talked about the post acute providers. We really don't send many patients to SNFs. Um, even our best SNFs. Um, underestimate the importance of a low sodium diet. We call them and say, you know, please take the hot dogs off the meal plan because all our patients are showing up back in the emergency room with fluid overload. Uh, we really are trying to move away from uh, sending patients to SNFs. The surgeons have to buy in on this. Pre-op, the surgeon needs to tell the patient, you're going home and set up uh, who's going to be there to meet you. Set expectations early. The team approach, we round with an interdisciplinary plan of care team. There's a case manager, uh, there's a pharmacist, uh, there are the um, rehab people. We have dedicated ambulation orderlies that ran, round with us and make sure the patients walk three times per day. Uh, and all this stuff is really, uh, I think, preventing all the uh, readmissions. Um, you don't want infections. You've got to be all over your antibiotics. Do not continue antibiotics when they're not necessary. Uh, and critical care settings must double down on their attention to uh, wound and pulmonary care and appropriate uh, antimicrobial stewardship. But that's pretty obvious to this uh, astute group. Uh, we also actually have something called an EDS. That's a new term. Uh, this is someone who actually camps out in the emergency room. It's a physician and works with a nurse practitioner and tries to get in front of readmissions. Um, it's a strange situation, but we're in uh, what's called a, a, a next generation ACO and we're dinged pretty hard for readmissions. So they uh, do whatever they can to admit patients to these sort of uh, less than 24 hour stay uh, um, units where they can diurese them, control atrial fibrillation, and keep from them from being readmitted. Uh, and we also have tons of, of guidelines now for the outpatient management of AFib, cellulitis, DVT. A lot of these patients do not need to be readmitted. Uh, we've put Improvada, which is one of these uh, HIPAA compliant um, uh, communication devices now. We used to start with just the doctors being on it. Now everybody's on it. You can talk to the PCP, the specialists, the case managers, the ER, even the extended care facilities. Everybody's on this system. You can tell who's available, who's not, and send a, um, a HIPAA compliant communication in real time about patients, including uh, documentation, x-rays, everything, which really is uh, working across all devices and uh, improving communications. And uh, just uh, finally, there's something called patient ping. It's another thing you can purchase, which actually tells you if your patient shows up in another hospital emergency room, it automatically calls you and says, hey, this is a patient that's in your bundle of care, and you can immediately jump in front of that admission. So it's just new technology preventing readmissions. Uh, 
And we talked a lot about counseling and how uh, patients may not even need a VNA. We used to send every single patient home with a VNA. A lot of patients don't even require that. Uh, but it is true, however, that an extra day or two in the hospital is probably cheaper and better for the patient than going to a skilled nursing facility. So uh, I finally convinced my hospital that even though the ER is backed up uh, and they're looking for my beds, I can actually save money for the institution by keeping select patients in the hospital a day or two and keeping them out of a skilled nursing facility. And here's our readmission rates for the last three years. It's been dropping. Uh, this is for... Um, cardiac surgical patients, and you can see we still have a way to go, but uh, the hospital does like seeing the downward trend, uh, and they like when we track it, and uh, that does help you to continue to employ the case managers and the uh, care coordinators. And here's our increased um, trends for sending patients home. We're up to 80% now uh, going home versus a skilled nursing facility. Uh, and future plans, uh, this is a crazy one that we're about to do, and it's uh, actually called Dispatch Health, and it's sort of like an Uber with a, um, a uh, advanced practitioner on board, and instead of sending a patient to the emergency room, select patients, uh, we're going to send the advanced practitioner to your house and then they evaluate them, they diuresis them, and they have select protocols in which they can keep them from even having to come to the emergency room. And it turns out it's actually cheaper to go to the patient than to have them come to the emergency room. Uh, and that's the end of that talk. Thank you. Appreciate it.